Hi, thanks for joining us for the Family Plots, Gardening in the Mid-South. I'm Chris Cooper. The summer may be only half over, but it's time to start thinking about the fall vegetable garden. Today, we're going to talk about what you need to do now to harvest in October. Also, terrariums are a fun way to grow plants. We'll show you how to build one. That's just ahead on the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Production funding for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South is provided by Goodwin's Landscape and Garden Center in Germantown since 1943 and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation. The WKNO Production Fund. The WKNO Endowment Fund. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to the Family Plot. I'm Chris Cooper. Joining me today is Dr. Lilia Kelly. Dr. Kelly is a horticulture specialist with Mississippi State Extension. And Mary Heim is here. Ms. Mary is a master gardener right here in Shelby County. Thanks for joining me, ladies. Thank you. Glad to be here. All right, Doc. Is it time to start planting? Planting or planting? Did planting. You... Planting. I, I, I guess you can plan too, can't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can do both. You can do both. You That's can do right. both. You certainly can. And this is a good time to be planning mm -hmm. what you would like to plant or sow for the fall garden. And, you know, we're blessed in the South with a very long yes, growing we, season. Yes, we have one. So mm -hmm. we can have fall garden as well as a spring and summer garden. And this time of year, you know, you can look at the greens that are typically sown in the fall, mm -hmm. like the turnips and the mustard and the lettuces, carrots, radishes. We can even grow a little fall crop of Irish potatoes. You know, we have a window of opportunity to get these things done between now and let's say, it depends on which, uh, which plants you're doing, but for the greens, you've got probably from mid-July mm -hmm. up until probably early October because you're eating the leaves and they're gonna grow very fast, right. you know, for the greens, the lettuce greens and the other, the, the mustard and things like that. So you've got a long time to, to get a little crop going and fall is, you know, the weather's nicer, you yeah. know. So nice it's to be good, outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can sure. grow beets in the fall. Oh, okay. You can, and if you can find the transplants like the broccoli and the cabbage, you can actually grow fall broccoli and cabbage. Okay. You know, if you get it out here in the next few weeks, It'll head up and you'll have a nice little crop before we get our killing frost around the end of October. Okay. Now let's talk about tomato rooting. Yeah. Right, yeah, because I know you're excited about <laughs> oh, this. So yeah, let's, yeah. let's show the folks. Yeah, we were talking about, you know, the crops you can grow in the fall. And, you know, this we're enjoying our tomatoes right now. Sure right? Yeah. I mean, everybody's yes. got a lot yes. of tomatoes coming on. Your plants are doing well. Mm -hmm. If you're a gardener, you already have tomatoes growing right now and producing. But what you can do, if you do it real quickly, you've got a little window of opportunity here in July to take cuttings from your tomato plants in the garden. And the way you do that is remove the sucker. Okay. If you look at the tomato plant, you find a, a big leaf, you know, the leaf blade coming out right. from the main stem, there will be a little sucker coming out. And it'll look like a little tomato plant. That's exactly what it looks like, and you just pop that thing out, <laughs> and uh, you can root it, and it will, tomatoes root really uh, easily. Easy. Yeah, yeah easy. really, really easily, and that's what I've done here with these. I did these about, I took these from my brandy wine, okay. and then I had a little, uh, what we used to call the Tommy Toe tomatoes, little <laughs> salad tomatoes. I pinched off some of those, and uh, I used a, an old time kind of a, a folk idea but it's actually based in science. Okay. It actually does work because they've done research to show that it works. But I used willow water How about that? from the willow tree <laughs> to water or soak these cuttings uh, prior to sticking them in my little cell pack here. And we know that willow trees root really, really easily. You can just pull a branch off, stick it in the ground, and within a week or so you've got roots and uh -huh. you've got another willow tree. So there is a really potent rooting hormone that is in that plant. Wow. And so what the old timers used to do, they would take the little branches, about as big as a pencil or so, chop them up, macerate them a little bit with a hammer or something, and then put them in water. And this is 
the willow water How about that? that I hmm. used to soak my cuttings in for a few hours, just the stem ends, you know, okay. stuck them in like a little vase okay. and put them in there. And then I watered my, my cuttings and they rooted, y'all, within five days. They had root initials coming out in five days. And to keep the tops from wilting, because they have no roots, sure. you know, so you want to keep the moisture and keep it kind of humid. I do a lot of traveling for Mississippi State <laughs> University and I stay in a lot of motels, hotels, and they always have these little bonnets and I don't know what you do with them. They look like a little greenhouse to me. So I said, you know, I'm going to save those little dudes and I'm going to make me a little greenhouse. Only a plant person could have thought of that, right? <laughs> How about that? And it's got the elastic, you know, it's perfect. And what that does is it keeps the humidity yeah. in. Just and makes it keeps sense. The, yeah, and it keeps the cuttings uh, for the foliage from drying out while it's rooting. And then, like I say, in five days, I had them out of my back. And keep them out of direct sun. You don't oh, want to yeah, put them in yeah. direct sunlight because they will, of course, they will be just like a scald them real good. But I want to show you after uh, 11 days, 10 okay. or 11 days since this was stuck in here, I want to show you the roots that have come out of this tomato cutting. Nice roots too. Look at that. Real nice fibers. Yeah, all right. the way through. That's real nice. So then now you can, I can put this into my garden and within a few months or so, right about the time I get a killing frost, mm -hmm. I'll have tomatoes. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully tomatoes. before then, yeah. you know, and the little, the uh, little salad tomatoes will bear really quickly. Okay. So you can definitely do those and, and have a nice fall crop of your salad tomatoes and even the bigger tomatoes if you do it now, you know. Wow, how interesting is that, the willow? Yeah, the, the willow water, water. How yeah. How about that? And then I had this extra pot. Let me show you this real quick. Okay. You know how yeah. gardeners always recycle their pots? And I cannot for the life of me remember what was in this. <laughs> but I saved it. I thought, look at that little frame around that thing. And then I was digging around in my pot shed and I thought, looking for something, you know, to stick my case. I said, man, that's perfect, you know? See, look, it's got the frame for my little greenhouse. Mm -hmm for my little uh, shower bonnet. So, you know, wow. you can always use things you have if you kind of look at it <laughs> in a different way, maybe. But this one rooted real real well, too, you know. So, willow water, willow tomatoes, water. yep. Or you can root a lot of things using the That's willow water. Neat. Yeah. And now a lot of our gardeners are going to be going to hotels, and guess what they're going to come out with? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Instant greenhouse. There you go, gardeners. How about that? Yeah, yep. All right. Let's talk about preparing the ground, though, for our... Oh, okay, yep. For our garden so well as you mentioned uh, earlier I think we were talking about something else before the show or something I don't remember but it said it's always better to to get it ready when you can mm -hmm. you know now we know if you know you're gonna have a fall garden and let's say your summer vegetables have done their thing and you've got say sweet corn that's already come in right. you can take the corn out get the ground ready get it prepared if you haven't done a soil sample in a few years, maybe it'd be a good idea to do that, and then you'll have the results back in a week or so or whatever, you know, that usually takes UT to, to get those analysis <laughs> <That's right>. back. <laughs> That's right. And then you can put your amendments, but, you know, be prepared, so get it ready, and then when the weather gets nice, you know, and everything gets, the ground gets dry enough, go ahead and fix it up and get it ready. Okay. Let me ask you this. What kind of soils do y'all have down there in Mississippi? Oh, extremely good. Uh, extremely good. <laughs> you know we do. Uh, they got that good stuff down there. Well, it there, depends huh? on what part of Mississippi okay. you're talking about. So the part that you're... The corn. hill country okay. is where I live. Yeah. I live in North Mississippi. Okay. And it's the loamy soil okay, up there. So, so we have, you know, we have the hills and the, the little valleys. And, of course, it's really very, very rich soil. Oh, it really is. It drains the, well. It does. Okay. It does. Real... For Mississippi, it's uh, a lot of organic matter, I think, when you do it. So it's in the pH, the, the natural pH of our native soils in North Mississippi typically are acidic. Oh, wow. So you I may need too. to do a pH and see if you need to move it up a little bit for some of our vegetable crops. All right, Doc, we appreciate that wonderful information. <laughs> sure. Right. There are a number of gardening events going on in the next couple of weeks. Here are just a few that might interest you. Hi, right, Ms. Mary. Terrariums. And these look nice. Mm -hmm. So get us started. 
Okay. What is a terrarium? Well, it's like a little ecosystem in itself, and it's a, it's a way to bring the, the outdoors in. Hmm. When I got started um, interested in terrariums, it was in the winter, it was cold, uh. and I saw this in a magazine, and I thought, well, you know, I should try that. I tried it back in the 70s, I thought I should try it again. And after I did it, I thought, well, I could teach people how to do this. Yeah. So, so you've been doing it ever out. since, right? Mm -hmm. Just teaching folks how to do it? A couple of years, two years or so I've been doing it. Okay. So I'd like to show you different kinds that I have made. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, sure. This is a Wardian type. A lot of people buy nice. these containers at Michael's or Hobby Lobby, and they put candles in them. But in this uh, instance, I've put like a little Gladware or plastic container oh, like I you store it. your food in, mm -hmm. and then I hide it with the moss. So now you can water it and there's no problem with any of that. I have this in a west window and I've had it there for two years and it, it uh, does really well. As you can tell, it just keeps going. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I could trim it back, but I like it like that. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. I like that. It's real, real easy to do because you can slide this out if you wanted to, if okay, you wanted to replace one of the plants okay. that it didn't do well. And I do that quite often, switch, switch plants out if they don't do like I want them to. All right, can you tell us the type of plant material that you like to use? I get, uh, I get indoor plants from Lowe's or Home Depot, or uh, I got these little bitty small ones from Millstone, ah. and they're really ideal, but any indoor plant uh, will work well. Ivies will do well. I love these, these do very well. And uh, if they sell them inside, then they'll, they'll go into your terrarium. You can even use um, succulents, but mm -hmm. you can't have a closed sure. terrarium with a succulent. But just about anything you can buy there, it'll, it'll do really well. Okay. Now, what about your soil layers? So what are you okay. using for I'm that? Let's talk a little bit about that. I'm going to you how to do that. that. Okay. Uh, this is actually a fish bowl, mm. and um, I bought it specifically because I like the shape of it. You would start with, since you have no drainage, you have to put some stones in here to make your uh, water that you do, when you do water it, to make it uh, drain through. This is gonna be a little loud. Okay. <laughs> put enough in there to cover the whole bottom of it. All right. You have to use some activated carbon. You can only buy this <laughs> at, a, at a pet store that sells fish, because okay, it sure. would use it in an aquarium. This is to keep your uh, plants from any fungus growing and to reduce any smell, like when something is wet for a long time. Mm. And it keeps, keeps your little garden sweet. So I just sprinkle it in there like that. All right. Okay. Then I would take, I usually use three plants, three different kinds of plants. That's some little bitty plants. Yeah, they they look so cute. <laughs> you reminds can, me you of know, a little fairy garden. It does. Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking about. There's, and that's so prevalent yeah. now. You can right. find things. Yeah. If it's too big, usually I set my plants down in here just to get an idea of how I want them to look. Okay. And, it, and, um, and then I'll start planting. But if it's something that's too big, just split it. This might be a little large for this, so I would have split it out. Okay. Uh, I put my plants in first and then put the dirt in around it. Okay. It saves some time. And you don't have to dig a hole in your in your dirt to arrange <laughs> it. And if you don't like it, then you start moving you things start around. Moving around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Now my favorite part of all this really is the add-ins that you add to make your terrarium your own. Okay because uh, I have a lot of little things at home that are keepsakes. I found this turtle oh, shell. Uh -huh. yeah. And yeah. I think it, uh, these are the kind of things I like to look at and enjoy, so I, I always put them in my terrariums. Okay. Or interesting rocks. I'm a big rock collector, so I, I buy these at almost every craft when the craft okay. people come by. Uh -huh. And you can put those down in there. Um, this comes from a fairy garden. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you can stick those in there. Or any kinds of uh, roots that are interesting to you. Crystals. Fairy garden little turtles. It gives you a pop of color, too. And see, like the pink in this flower will put uh, the pink in the little turtle here. Will, uh, okay, I got you. Feed off of that. And then you can put moss in there to help 
maintain the water level or to, to keep the moisture in there, but I hardly ever do that unless it's a decorative item. Okay. Now, what, what kind of soil media do you now have? Now, this, there? I just use potting soil oh, that potting you get okay. mm -hmm, at uh, Lowe's or Home Depot, and um, I fill it in. The one thing that, a uh, little trick, when I first started doing this, I ordered some books and read about some little tricks that you could use. And one thing I found was, uh, this is just a cork stuck onto a barbecue skewer. And it helps pat things down <laughs> nice and neat. What are these gardeners? What I tell you? Oh, <laughs> they they everybody everything. always loves this. This is how you water it. Because oh, if you were to sprinkle, then you, you're throwing dirt there on the side right, of your right. container. So you get right down in there and water it. <laughs> oh, I know. tell you. That's smart. Yeah, and it, it's... Uh, and I always want these placed in the location where I sit every day. Like okay. I have them in the in the den in front of the, on the coffee table, okay. so I can see them while I'm watching sure. TV. And it, it, you know, you can kind of see if something is wrong. You need to check them every week, water them, at least check or water once a week. Okay. Now, how much water are we talking about? Just like a half a um, cup or a fourth of a cup. Okay. We're not talking okay. about much at all. Okay. And if this, these should grow and fill in here, but uh, if you wanted it more full, then of course just use a bigger plant. Sure. But I like to put, um, put my rocks in, like I said. These will catch the light. On my birdhouse. Okay. <laughs> How creative Roots. is that? I yeah. know it. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty good. Now the dirt itself, you know, it's kind of bland, so you can start putting small pebbles on top of this. You can even make a little path in it. If you had a bigger, longer terrarium, okay. you could make it with hills and valleys. Okay. Um, I'm gonna try that next time. Okay, okay. But put some rocks in and put some decorative rocks in it. Um, things that are, are very interesting. Mm -hmm. And you can put those on the side. So every way you turn it, you can have a little something different. Okay. Now, while you're doing that, what about maintenance? I mean, how are you just, taking care of just your Just check terrarium? it once a week. Okay. Keep it clean. It does get dusty. So keep it clean so the light can get through it. Okay. Uh, keep it a west window in the winters really well. As long as nothing, is, uh, a big stream of sunlight hit it, okay. then you're fine. Okay. A west window is fine. I've kept these in the west windows and um, our southern window. And just check them to see if they're damp enough once a week, see if there's anything growing on it. Uh, fungus will start growing on something like this, so just just either take it out or replace it. I even like to put little seed heads mm. in there. It makes it kind of uh, different. You can change it for the seasons. You could use a theme like a, um, seashells, anything like that to make Snow it look white the, and seven dwarves, yeah, you know, yeah. for Christmas. Yeah, it's so creative. Yeah, okay. it is. So it, it um, it's that little whirl on to itself. Yeah, yeah. it is. And you can make it your own, like oh, she yeah. mentioned yeah. earlier. Put little keepsakes in there, and, and uh, it's fun to look at in the winter when there's nothing outside. And it's fun to make, and they make good gifts. And yeah, Miss mm -hmm. Mary, we appreciate that demonstration. Thank you. Thank you much for being here. Thank you very All much. Right. Remember, we love to hear from you. Send us a letter or an email with your gardening questions. Send your email to familyplot at wkno.org. The mailing address is Family Plot, 7151 Cherry Farms Road, Cordova, Tennessee, 38016. All right, here's our Q&A session. Ms. Mary, you jump in there with us. All right, bit of okay. master gardening and all. Okay. <laughs> Help us out a little bit. Yeah. All right, here's our first viewer email. Uh, what happened to my plums? I sprayed <laughs> for pests every seven to 10 days from the time they bloomed. Everything looked good until about two weeks ago when they started shriveling up. What do I need to do to prevent this? I'm tempted to get the <laughs> ax. <laughs> and this is uh, Mr. Richard in Fayette County. Hold on, Mr. Richard, before you, get the, before you bring out the ax, the ax yeah. okay? Um, so what do we think that is? Of course, look, here's the giveaway: shriveling. Yeah. Shriveling. And then you can Blum. see the, the you can see in the picture he sent good very well. Too, it's Mr. easy to that's good a picture. great picture. Yeah, good picture. Because you can definitely tell that that's what we call brown rot. It's brown rot. Yeah, and that is the disease of peaches and plums and nectarines, and it's typically 
uh, happens if you don't adhere to a spray program, but it sounds like he did. So it's possible that because of the frequent rains we've had, that there just wasn't enough mm -hmm. protective covering on that or protectant layer to keep that stuff from just spreading all around his tree. And once it gets in there, it just goes like wildfire. That's right. Because if one of these fruits touches another fruit, it'll just, right yeah. there, it's gone. Passing and it can happen just within a, a week and all of your fruit will be gone. Once it's in the trees, it, it can be kind of hard to control because it's not only is the fruit, you need to get rid of that fruit because the spores that are mm -hmm. causing the disease are going to overwinter in that old shriveled up mummy fried fruit. Yeah, the fruit. mummies. Yeah. The mummies. You get mummies. rid of the mummies yeah. <laughs> and take them off somewhere and burn them up or <laughs> put them in the ground, bury them or do something. And then if it can also cause cankers on the stems mm -hmm. and it can overwinter there. So you have to, the ax might not be a bad <laughs> idea, but not so much an ax, a little yeah. pruning, a little, you pruning. Know, yeah. little bit of selective <laughs> pruning, taking out some of those real kind of cankered looking lesions that are on the twigs and branches and hopefully it won't massacre his tree too bad. Yeah, I hope not. Yeah, uh -huh. and then just really try to stay up on the spray program next year. Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Richards, so hold off on the ax. Just do some uh, selective pruning, <laughs> get that light in there for good light penetration and you'll be just fine. All right, so here's our next question. What is the best way to improve the texture of clay soil? Somebody from Shelby County. Move to Mississippi. <laughs> yeah, move, 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 move to North, North Mississippi. Mississippi. Well, I was talking about the soil a while ago. We Ms. Mary, you could probably help us out with this one. So what do you, how do you improve the soil at your place? I, I buy a, um, a product that would have a lot of um, twigs and everything in it, like leaf compost okay. or leaf mold, leaf or something mold like that. and uh, I layer that, just keep layering it over the years. You can, you know, it'll start to amend. Of course, I still um, have a lot of that in my yard over the years, but you dig just so far, right. you're going to hit that clay again. And I, I don't know that it's so awful. I haven't had too much trouble with it myself. That's not awful. It's not bad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I tell people, don't curse clay. You actually need a little clay. Yeah. 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 Hold clay, water, clay is okay hold in the right proportion. In the right <laughs> proportion, that's right. <laughs> but I don't and what you don't and... add is sand. A lot of yeah. people want to add sand. Yeah, yeah. They, they definitely want and to that, do that. You don't mm -hmm. want to do that. Yes. Organic matter. Mm -hmm. right. You just need any kind of organic matter to kind of break up and make mm -hmm. the particle size a little bigger so mm -hmm. that the, you know, it can drain through. Because mm -hmm. with clay, you know, it's, it's such tiny, tiny, tiny little tiny. particles that it's got all this expanding and contracting and you know, get the big cracks, the y'all foundations crack, uh -huh. that's cause of clay soil. It's a problem here. That kind of thing. So just add, like you said, anything that kind of organic matter. Right, leaf mold, mm -hmm. you know, manure, mm -hmm. you know, those kind of things yeah. would be, you know, just fine uh, to break it up. But again, you need a little clay. <laughs> you just need it in the right proportions, that's for sure. And yeah. not too much sand. I'm glad you mentioned that because yeah. we get that question a lot. A lot of people want to add sand. They just want to add sand not, and more uh -uh. sand and more sand. I yeah. Say, you keep doing that with clay and water, guess what you're going to get? Yeah. Concrete. You know, concrete. You concrete. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, you know, artificial yeah. plants maybe work in that situation. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so, you have to be careful with that. So. If you want to make a ball court, it's like this. <laughs> right. You know. Basketball court or something. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, organic material will be just fine. And I think it'll be good. So whether you're in Mississippi, North Mississippi, <laughs> or right here in Shelby County, yeah. organic material will take care of that and you'll be just fine. Yeah. All right, here's our next question. Lightning struck our tree. Trees. The oak is destroyed, but the pine took a glancing blow. Okay. <laughs> will the pine tree survive a lightning strike? And this is from Charlie from Middleton, Tennessee. I see, I see you smiling, so what do you think? It's a well, glancing blow. Glancing okay. blow to me means that it sort of ricocheted and mm -hmm. maybe just took out a small little bit of the pine tree. You know, and if it took the, the oak out, that means it probably hit the top and went all the way to the bottom, bottom. and blew yeah. it out. That's what I'm thinking. But uh, the pine, it probably was just the periphery. So not, again, being able to see the tree and going by his yeah. description of a glancing blow, I would assume that it's probably going to be all right unless it gets hit again. <laughs> and then that might be the death nail of it, you know, but yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, it's hard to tell, especially without yeah. a picture. Glancing blow. Hmm. Yeah. Um, it's like a fist fight, you know, glancing blow. Glancing blow. blow. How yeah, about that? that's not much. It doesn't sound like too bad a damage. Right. So, so, so there's a pretty good chance that the tree may survive. 
Yeah. Uh, that's a pretty good chance. Uh, you know, I, I do know that the heat from the lightning strike will sap, you know, some of the energy from the tree. Uh, yeah. And of course, you know, the tree is going to need nutrients because it's stressed out at that point. So in order to get the nutrients back to the tree, you have to water the right. tree. Yeah. You know, so you can take those nutrients back up. So I would water deeply uh, and then just try to evaluate and see what happens, you know, after a little time. You know, yeah. we can get some new growth or something like that. It may be okay. You know, yeah. All right. So there you have it, Mr. Charlie. All right. So, Miss Mary, Dr. Keller, we're out of time. That's all we have time for today. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Cooper. Be sure to join us next time for The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Be safe. Production funding for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South, is provided by Goodwinds Landscape and Garden Center, in Germantown since 1943, and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants, plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation. The WKNO Production Fund. The WKNO Endowment Fund and by viewers like you. Thank you.